Hello guys, welcome to another video. This one is paper 1-1 one, one of May June 2015 for O-Level Math D. So let's move on to uh, question number one. So here we have to evaluate these two fractions. So step one, here we have a mixed number, so we have to expand this one. So you will have 3 over 8 plus, so 1 times 3 plus 1 is 4 over 3. Now you realize that the base are different, so we have to find the LCM. So we find this by multiplying each other in this case. That will become 24. Then we cross multiply. 3 times 3 will be 9 plus 32. And that will be um, 41 over 24. You can leave your answer like that, or you can write this down as a mixed number as well. That will be part A. Now for part B, we have to solve this. So first we have to evaluate inside the brackets. So 2 minus 1.4 is 0 0.6. So 5 minus 3 times 0 0.6. Now 5 minus, what is 3 times 0 0.6? That will be 3 times 6 will be 18. And we have one decimal place that will be right here. 1.8. So that will give you 3.2 as your answer. That is question part 1. Now number two, in the diagram we have six small triangles are shaded. Shade one more triangle so that the diagram will have one line of symmetry. So now you have to observe and test where would I shade this one um, triangle so it has only one line of symmetry. So by observation, I can see that hey, if I, if I do this, if my line of symmetry was right here, on this point right here, so we have this matches with this, this matches with this, this is this. So only one has to be shaded so that I have my line of symmetry will be my line right here. So that will be part A. Now for part B, uh, we have a diagram shows it has a, we know it has a rotational symmetry already. Now, mark the center of the uh, rotational symmetry with a dot and write down the order of the symmetry. So from what you can observe, here we have we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 9 is, from what I can see, they are a group of 3s. So 3, so here we have one set. Right, that you can see. Let me use different colors so you can see how they are grouped together. And finally, we have this one. Okay, so from what you can see, uh, they have three of the same kind of patterns. So the center will be here, right? And the order will be, because it is three of the same kind, it will be, so 360. So the degrees will be uh, 120, but the order is 3. You have to write down 3 because you have 3 of the same kind of patterns that's happening between this point of O. Now that is uh, question number 2. Now let's move on to uh, question number 3. So express this as a fraction in its um, simplest form. This is 3.75%, which is 3.75%. 0.75 over 100. Now we can simplify this too. If we send this over here, so we send 1, 2, you will have 375. Now we have to also move, add two zeros. Now let's divide by, divide by, uh, let's try 5, why not? You will have 2, you will have uh, 0 here, that will be 7, 5. Now let's try 5 again. You have four zero zero, and here you will have one five. So you have one five over four hundred. Now divide by five again, you will have three, and you will have eight zero. So three over eighty will be the simplest fraction that we have from this percentage. Now for part B, arrange these numbers uh, in order, beginning with the smallest. So one thing we can do is we can make everyone have the same base. So this. Let's make it become the same base of 40. So 5 times what number give you 40? So 5 times 8, right? 
So you have times 8 here, that will be 32. And this one, we have uh, 3. So here we have 4. 4 times what number give you 40? 4 times 10. So we have times 10, that will be 30. So now since all the base are equal, we can compare the top pretty easily. So which one is the smallest? You can see this one has to be the smallest, which is this one. So 3 over 4. Then we have this one, 31 over 40. And finally, 4 over 5. That is question number three. Now, question number four, correct to six decimal place. We have these two values given to you. Now, find the difference between those two. <laughs> Give your answer correct to two decimal, uh, two, si two significant figures. So, the difference will be taking one value. So, 3.16667 minus 3.162278. So let's find that one by one. So first thing I can uh, cross out here, you will have 5. That will be, uh, so 10 goes here, that will be 9, right? And then 10. 10 minus 8 will be 2, plus 7 will be 9. So here I will have 9 minus 7, that will be 2, plus, plus 6, that will be 8, and 3, that will be 4, 0. 0. 0. So write down your answer correct to 2SF, that should be 0 0.0044, 2SF. Now for part B, estimate correct to the nearest whole number the value of this. So how can you find the value of this? So nearest whole number. Whole number is integers, so let's write this down. So here we have uh, 2.96, so nearest whole number will be 3. Here we have 4.002, we can write this down as 4. So you will have 3 square plus 4 square, that should be 9 plus 16, that will be root of 25, that should be 5. And that will be part B of your question number 4. Now uh, let's move on to question number 5. So expressing each answer in standard form, we first have to find P square. P square is 4 times 10 power 5 square. Now become 4 square times 10 power 10, that is 16 times 10 power 10, that will be 1.6 times 10 power 11. That will be part 1. Now part B we have to find P plus Q. P is 4 times 10 power 5 plus Q, 7 times 10 power 6. Now since the powers are different, we cannot add them, we have to change the power to make it the same, right? So here we have the same thing. Here we have to send one zero over here, it will become 70 times 10 power 5. So now you can add those two, you will have 74 times 10 power 5, and to standard form 7.1 power 6, right? That is uh, question number 5. Now, question number six, a car manufacturer states that the, a particular car uses five liters of fuel in traveling 100K. So, okay, so now it produces 110 grams of CO2 for each kilometers traveled. Okay, use this information to calculate the mass of CO2 produced by one liters of fuel. So let's, let's do one by one. We know that he uh, travels uh, 100 k km from 5 liters. So 1 liters will be 20 km. Now using this, we know that 1 km, it produces 110 grams of CO2. Now we have to find 20 km. So times 20, that should be 2200 grams. Now kilograms will be 2.2 kg. That is your answer for question number six. Now let's move on to question number seven. The times taken by each member of a group of people to run 1 km were recorded. Now part one. So we have to use this table to draw the frequency polygon of the uh, results. So whenever you see polygon, you have to find the midpoint of those uh, values. This will be 2.5, this will be uh, 3.5, 4.5, 5.5, 5 
6.5 and 7.5 so let's do that 2.5 so first we have to label the scale for this part that is your uh, frequency scale right now here we have value from 0 until 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 so 1 2 3 4 and 5 so first we have 2.5 2.5 will be 0. So 2.5 is 0. About here. Then we have uh, 3.5 will be 4. Then we have 4.5 will be 5. Then we have 5.5 will be 3. Okay, and what else? We have uh, 6.5 is 1. 1 is right here. And then we have 7.5 will be 0. Okay, now we just have to join them to form your uh, frequency polygon by straight lines. Okay, that is your answer for question number 7. Now, question number 8. Uh, find the integers value of n that satisfy this equation. So first we have to make n become your subject of formula. So first thing, to eliminate minus 3, we have to plus 3 everywhere. You will have 4n, that will be 33 and 23. Now divide by 4, you will have this and this. Now we can simplify on those numbers. Let's try and do that. So um, here we have 23 over 4, that should give you uh, 4 times 5 is 20, so 5 3 remaining over 4 this one is 33 over 4 we know that 8 times 4 is 32, so 8 32, that will be 1 over 4 so basically you have n between 8 and 1 quarter and 5 and 3 quarter so if you were to draw a number line, you will see here we have we have uh, five and three quarter, and here we have eight and one quarter. So before that we have eight, seven, and six. So the integer values that satisfy this will be this three, six, seven, and eight. That will be question number eight. Now let's move on to question number nine. Uh, y is inversely proportional to the square of x. So let's form our equation, square of x. So that can be written as equal to k over x square. Now, given that y equal to 3, x equal to 2, so let's solve to find the value of k. So k will be y is 3, x is 2 square. 3 times 4, that should be 12. So your new equation will be y is equal to 12 over x square. Now, Using that equation, we have to find the value of y when x equal to 5. So let's do that. y when x is equal to 5. That will be square. 12 divided by 25. Now you can leave this as this, or you can simplify if you want to. You can always do that times 4 here. Times 4 here. Why I do I do this is because if you want to divide, it is always easy to divide by 100. Right? That will be... 48, so it will be 0 0.48. So your answer can be this, or you can leave it just like that as well for your values. Now, uh, question number 10, find PQ. PQ will be matrix multiplication. It is always rows by color, okay? So rows, we have 3, 4, minus 5, and that will be minus 1, 1, 0. 1, 0, minus 1. So let's see. 3 times minus 1 is minus 3 plus 4 is 1 and then plus 0 is 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 just 1 now 3 times 1 is 3 times plus 0 that will be uh, 3 as well then plus 5 that should be 8 so 1 8 will be your resulting matrix now let's move on to question number 11 so we have to express this as a single fraction in its simplest form so from what you can see here we have 1 over x plus 2, 2 is also 2 over 1 plus, so the minus, 3 over x plus 1.
Now the main problem here is that the base are all different, so we have to find the LCM. So one way to find the LCM in this case, we can just multiply them by each other. You will have x times 1 times x plus 1. Now for the top, we have to multiply them by this number. So 1 over x times this will be given to you by uh, 1 times x plus 1. Now plus 2 times this will give you 2 times x times x plus 1. Now minus 3 over this times this will give you minus 3x. So now simplify, you will have x plus 1 plus 2x squared plus 2x minus 3x over x times x plus 1. Now simplify, uh, we will have uh, 2x squared is 2x squared. So we have x plus 2x is 3x minus 3x, that should be cancelled out. They are plus 1 over x, x plus 1. Okay, that will be your fraction in its simplest form. Okay, that will be uh, question number 11. Now let's move on to question number 12. Given that we have 6 power of x equal to 9, write down the value of this. So, the first thing is, if you see something power negative, you can always write this down as 1 divided by 6 power positive. Now, we know this is 9, that will be 1 over 9. Now this one again, so we have 6 power x over 2, we can write power x, and then take down the half outside, you will have 9 power half, that should be 3. Now for part C, anything power 0 is 1, so that will be 1, plus this one is 9, right, that should be 10. Now that is question number 12. Now let's move on to question number 13. So in this diagram we know that triangle ABC is similar to triangle uh, XYZ. So now, one thing to know is that when something is similar to the other thing, their sides, their corresponding sides, are proportional to each other. So what do I mean? For example, we have this, uh, so let's find the corresponding side first. So this angle here is equal to this angle, right? So I would say that by knowing they are similar, I can have ratio of their sides. So, so basically I can say this angle opposite this angle will be AC divided by opposite ZX that should be equal to if I say this angle that will be AB over XY and that should also be equal to uh, this angle which is BC over ZY so if they are similar, this ratio will be true for all those three sides for their corresponding sides, right? So by knowing this, we can find, use that to find the corresponding sides. So let's try one by one. So, okay, part one, calculate xy. Where is xy? xy is this one. So if you observe, xy is your side opposite this angle. So go to your triangle here. Opposite this angle, the side is given by? 3. So you can form an equation which is 3 over xy should be equal to one of those that we know. So what do we know here? So let's check. We know that, hey, uh, we know that this opposite, this is 12 and this is 8. So we have 8 over 12. Now, why do I put 8 first on top is because I begin with the smaller one first, so small side first over the big side. So same thing has to be small side over the big side, that's why. So now let's solve um, xy will be 3 times 12 divided by 8. So simplify that will become uh, 3, that will be 2, that will be 9 divided by 2, that should be 4.5. That will be your side of uh, xy, 4.5. But the main thing here, we found out the ratio between them is equal to 8 over 12, which is um, 2 over 3. That's the ratio of the sides. Okay. Now, part B, given that the area of triangle ABC is 10, calculate the area of triangle XYZ. So pretty easy. Since we know the ratio of the sides, so let's write this down. 
for triangle ABC and triangle XYZ. So the ratio of the sides is given by 2, 3, so 2 and 3. Okay, now the sides have a unit of centimeters. Now if you want to find the ratio of the areas, it has to be in centimeter square. So we have to square these two, that will be 4 and 9. So now we know that this is 10, 4 is equal to 10, so what is the value of 9? So let's do that uh, step by step. So 4 is equal to 10, 9 will be equal to 10, divide by 4 times 9. So let's try and simplify, that should be 2, that will be 5, you will have 45 over 2, that will be you can leave it like that or you can write down 22.5 if you want to simplify. That will be your area of triangle XYZ. Now let's move on to uh, question number 14. So we have a circle and you can see we have adults, boys and girls. Three kind of categories for this question. Now, a pie chart is used to illustrate the number of adults, girls and boys and a group of people. The angles for the adults and the girls are 80 and 120 respectively. So adults are 80 and girls have to be 120. So let's measure the angle 120 uh, using your compass, right? So let's make it this way so we have, we can see what exactly are we measuring. So girls will be 120, so you go to your center and then measure the angle 120. So that will be about right here. So by joining this two, the center to that point, but it needs to be inside of the uh, circle to form your um, pie chart, right? So that will be 120. Now what is this one? So that will be the remaining angle. You will do uh, 360 minus 120 first, that should give you 240 minus 80, that will be 0, 1, 10, 6, 1. That is 160 for the boys. Now part one done, complete your pie chart. Now part B, express the ratio of numbers of adults, girls, and boys. So A, G, and B. So we just compare the angles. So A, we have 80, girls, we have 120, and boys, we have 160. So first we can divide by 10, so cancel out the zeros. Then we can divide by four. You will have two, three, and four. That will be two, three, and four. That is their ratios. Now, part C, we have, uh, there are six more girls than adults. So we know that the difference between girls and adults are six, which means three, two, so three minus two is supposed to give you six, which is one share is six. Calculate the number of people in the whole group, so everything will be two plus three is five, plus four is nine. So one share is six, nine share will be six times nine, that should be. 54. And that is your answer for part C. Now let's move on to question uh, 15. So we have a point A given to you here, point B given to you right here. Now the line AB is mapped onto the line PQ by a translation of 0 minus 5. So it means that 0 is in this, is this direction, so we don't move anywhere left or right and minus 5 is means we move down by by 5. So basically what happened? This line was moved down by by 5. So let's do that. So basically it was translated to this position exactly below AB and this is your point P and Q. Okay? Now we have to find the coordinates of Q. Q, B was given to you by 6, 7. Now 6 is the x value, so the x value did not change because we did not move left or right, we only moved down. So q has to be 6, which is your x value, and this value changed to by minus 5, that will be 2. So q will be 6, 2. Now for part b, what special type of quad is a, b, q, p? As you can see, the angle is right angle that should be given to you by a rectangle. Now for part C, find the area of ABQP. So area is area of 
rectangle, you guys must know this by now, it is length times width. The length here is what? So here we have, so we can find this length. So the height is 5, right? The width is 5. And we know the point A is given to you by 1, 7. So this is also 5. So that will be, oh, so in this case, that will not be a rectangle because both sides are equal. If that is 5 and that is 5, that will be a square. That should be a square. Right. Now, um, from this area will be 25. So I realized this because afterwards when I check the sides, the two sides were 5 and 5. So that's why it is a square and not a rectangle. Okay, And your area is 25. Let's move on to question uh, 16. Express as a single matrix, so we have to solve this pretty easy. Minus 1, minus 1, that should be minus 2. Minus 3, minus, minus 2, minus 1. 1, minus 2 should be minus 1. 0, minus, minus 5 will be 5. Now find the inverse. First you have to find the determinant. That will be cross multiply 3 times 1 minus 5 times minus 1. That should be 3 plus 5. That should be 8, right? Uh, 3 plus 5 okay so and then we have to find the adjoint matrix of this that should be change the position you have 3 up 1 down change the sign that should be minus 5 1 so inverse will be equal to 1 over determinant times the adjoint matrix 1 1 now for question 17 factorize completely um, so let's do that so we can take our 3 you have 1 minus 4 a square now if you observe we have 1 square minus 2a square. And it's 3 times 1 minus 2a and 1 plus 2a. Now part b factorize as well. So let's see what do we have here. Here we have um, we have x square and here we have xy. So let's group them together. Let's try. Why not? So you have x square plus 2xy. And then we have minus 3x minus 6y. If you take out x, you will have x plus 2y. Now here, if you take out uh, minus x, sorry, you take out minus 3 actually, not x. Take out minus 3, 3 is common, you will have x plus 2y. So this and this are the same, we can take it out. Factorize, you will have x minus 3. That is your factorization for question. Now, question number 19, we have to find the angles. So in the diagram, A, B, C, and D lie on the circle, center O, and we have A, D as your diameter. So one thing we should know is that if you have a diameter, A, D, and you have a triangle over the diameter, this angle here has to be 90. That's one thing you should know. Okay. Now we have uh, the tangent to the circle at B, meets the line da at t. So this is the tangent, which means that this is also 90. Now question number one, find the angle x. x is this one. So if you have a triangle a, d, c, x will be 180 minus this minus this. Let's try out. So that will be 180 minus 90. That will be 90 minus 43. That should be uh, 47. That will be your angle x. Now, part B, find Y. Where is Y? Y is this one. If you observe, it is angle at circumference should be half the angle at center. So Y will be 68 divided by 2. That will be 34. Now, for part C, we have to find the Z. Where is Z? Z is right here. So if you observe, we have T, B, D as your triangle, 90, 68, that should be 90 minus 68. That should be uh, 8, 10, 2, 2, 22. Now, part D, find the value of T. Where is T? T is this one. So how can you find this value of T if you observe? Uh, we know this already. So this is what? This will be 180 minus 68. That should give you... Uh, 7, 10 will be 2, 1, 1. So 1, 1, 2. And if you know um, 
we know this angle here as well so y is given to you by 34 34 plus 90 will be this one that should be what 34 plus 90 that should be 4 and 12 124 we know x also is given to you by 47 so we have to find this remaining angle so if you observe we have a quadrilateral BODC so we can find this by taking 360 minus the angles right so let's add them together so 124 plus 112 that will be 6 3 2 plus 47 that should be 3 8 2 so 2 8 3 that should be 5 10 that will be 7 2 10 that should be 7 so T has to be 77 okay so that is question 19 let's move on to question number 20 uh, we have four oil rigs are positioned at vertices of a triangle of a rectangle A B C D A B C D now the one thing I always advise is to continue the north line so you can see what's happening okay so let's do that okay so here first thing is the bearing of B from A is 40 find the bearing of A from B A from B will be this one so let's use a different color so we have to find the red angle so now if you observe this is a straight line this is 40 what is this one this will be given by 180 minus 40 that should be uh, 140 if this is 140 this also has to be 140 so this has to be 360 minus 140 that will be 0 2 2 that will be 220 now for part 2 the bearing of C from B so we have to uh, C from B let's draw the north line as well at the point C so C from B we have to find let me use a different color we have to use this one we have to find this one so how would you find this angle now if you observe if the red angle is 220 we know that this is 90 so this has to be 220 minus 90 0 1 10 3 130 so this will be 130 so your angle will be 130 now for part 3 C from D so let's go back to D as well we have to draw your north line to find your bearing so let me use a different color so C from D we have to find this angle so how can you find uh, this angle so you have to observe we know this is 90 so we know this angle here is 140 right so this is 90 so this will be 140 minus 90 that will be 50 if this is 50 this also has to be 50 right and if this is 50 we know this is 90 this has to be 40 so your answer here will be 40 now for part B a supply of helicopter due to arrive at D okay at 8 15 a.m. that's the time it is due to arrive, uh, arrive at the point D now it leaves its base at 7.33 a.m. and it takes 49 minutes to fly to D. How many minutes late does it arrive at D? So let's find out. So let's plus 49. So 7.33 plus 49. So that will be 12. That will be 8. 8 minus 6, that will be 2. 8. As you can see, it arrived late compared to the uh, planned time. So that will be 8.22 minus 8.15. That should be 7. 7 minutes late. That will be question 20. Now let's move on to question number 21. So what do we have here? We have a graph of x-axis and your y-axis. So part 1. On the grid above, shade the region of R defined by these inequalities. So x is between 1 and 5. So let's do that. 
let's first draw this line just to know where is 1 and 5 so we have 1 here and 5 here okay and next thing is we know that it is between four y values between 2 and 4 so 2 and 4 Okay, so the region that it defines is between those four lines. It will be this one, right? That is the shaded region. Now, part B, the line L with the equation y equal to 1 over 3x is drawn on the grid. So this is your line uh, y equal to 1 over 3x. Now, question, part 1, draw the line of y equal to 1 over 3x plus k. k is your y-intercept. It is where you cut your y-axis, so we call this y-intercept. So that it passes through a point belonging to r, belonging to r, such that k is as large as possible. Okay, so pretty easy. So since you see they have the same gradient, they have to be parallel, right? So we take this one. You just have to kind of shift in this region to find what is the possible value of your y-intercept. Like shift, shift, can it be this point? So let's see what is the possible largest value that we can have. So that, so from what I can see it will be right here, right? It should be about this point. So that you can have the uh, largest value because the last value you can take will be this point which is the point 1, 4 so let's write this down uh, 1, 4 so this is your x and y find the value of k you will have um, let's replace you will have y is 4 1 over 3x plus k k will be 4 minus this, that should be 3, and 2 over 3. That's your value of k. Now you just have to draw the line now, which should be about this point. So 3. So if you know, so the first point is this one, right? Now let's find another point on the, in this direction so we know exactly uh, what we're looking for. Since we know the uh, equation already, which is y, 1 over 3x, plus k, k is equal to uh, 3, 2 over 3, that should be, 3 times 3 is 9, that should be 11 over 3. Okay? So let's see if you put another value of x. If x equal to what? If x equal to 4, for example, y will be? 15 over 3, that should be 5. So another point on the line will be 4, 5. So 4, 5 will be right here. So let's join those two as well. Sorry about that. So let's join those two points so we know that it goes in this direction. Okay, that will be your line of y equal to this. Of course, you have to label the line on the graph for your marks. That will be y equal to 1 over 3x plus k, where k is equal to 3, 2 thirds. Okay, so k is not an in integer, it doesn't say anywhere, so it can be a fraction as well. That is 21. Let's move on to question number 22. That is a locus question. Let's see, uh, what do we have? The diagram shows the lines A, B, and B, C. So we have A, B, and B, C. Okay, given to you. Now the point D is 11 centimeters from A and 9 centimeters from C. So here we have to use our compass and let's measure those two distances. We have 11 from the point D. Okay, so 11 from the point D. Sorry, from the point A, not D. So because here we have to find the point D. So let's go to your point A and then make an arc on this side. 
That is the first step. Now next it is 9 centimeters from C, so measure 9. And go to your point C to intersect that arc. Okay, that is your point of intersection. So once you have that, you can label this as your point D. Now join all the points together to form your quad A, B, C, D. So there you go. And finally, AD will be joined by this line. Okay. Now what else? We have on the diagram, construct the locus of points inside, that is important, that are equidistant from BC. So BC is this C. It has to be equidistant, so we have to find the perpendicular bisector of BC. So going to your point C, you have to draw an arc. Now with the same distance, go to your point B, intersect the first arcs. As you can see, you have two points of intersection. Join those two together to form your perpendicular bisector of BC, which is your locus for this one. Equidistance from A, B, and B, C. This is the same. So we have to find the angular bisector of angle B. Go to this side. We have to go to your point B. First thing we have to intersect your line BA and BC. You will see two points of intersection. Now go to each point with the same distance. Draw an arc inside of the quad. This one. And go into this one, intersect the first arc. Okay, as you can see, there's a point here. We have to join B to that point. Okay, that will be right here. Okay, it has to be inside of the uh, of the shape, right? Now, for part C, it says the two loci meet at the point P. The point P is right here. Label the point P and measure the distance dp. So let's join these two, or you can just measure directly. So according to my drawing, it shows to be about six. Yep, six. Six centimeters according to my drawing. And that will be question number 22. Okay, so let's move on to uh, question number 18. So first thing is we have the universal set is an integer between 40 and 50 inclusive. So first, of course, let's list the values of that. We have 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. That will be the universal set for where x is an integer. Now part one, p is a prime number. So how do you find prime numbers from the list? So first thing we can eliminate is that we know even numbers cannot be prime. So even numbers won't be removed okay, from the list for now. Now we have 41. So 41, if you think it is prime because they, they don't have any other factors. So 41. Then we have 43. It is also prime. Then we have uh, 45 is not prime. It is 9 times 5. 47 is also prime and 49 is not prime because it is 7 times 7. So you end up with these three numbers for uh, the set of P. Now for this one, uh, it is a multiple of 6. So basically 1 times 6, 2 times 6 going on, right? Now from, the list, from this list, we will have, if you think we have 6 times 6 is 36, it is not in the list. Then we have 6 times 7, which is 42, it is in the list, 42. Then we have 8 times 6 will be 48, okay? And then we have 9 times 6 will be 54, so it will be too much. So we have two elements from this set Q. Now part 1, what is the number of elements of P? You have 1, 2, 3, so that will be 3. Now for part 2, list the members of Q. As you have seen, we've done that already. That should be just 42 and 48. That will be part 2. Now let's move on to part B. In a group, there's 25 people. We have 11 people on both a bicycle and a skateboard. Six people own 
neither of them and people own a bicycle so find the smallest and the largest possible values of n so we have to have uh, two options right one case where we will get the smallest another case where we will get the largest so let's do the first case first so first case we can assume that b sorry s is a subset of b that will be s and that will be b okay so 25 will be everything 11 people own both so that will be 11 now six people own neither that will be outside and then n people own a bicycle so n will be this much so only bicycle will be n minus 11. so now so let's draw this as well as your universal set so for this one we know that if you add everything up you are supposed to have 25 right so n minus 11 plus 11 plus 6 is equal to 25. so if you observe n will be equal to 19. that is one value of n now case number two we can assume that b is a subset of s right in that case it says um, 11 people own both a bike and a, and a skateboard has to be right here and uh, we have to find the value of n n is what n is the people who owns a bike so that will be n so n can be 11 or n can be 19 so the smallest one should be 11 and the largest one should be 19 and that is your question number 18 okay so let's move on to question number three so we have kim and lee run a 200 2000 meter race cross country uh, course that starts at p and then at q so as you can see they begin here this has to be p and q has to be at the point of 2000 so p and q okay now lee starts one minute after kim as you can see here kim starts here so that will be kim okay and lee starts one minute after that will be uh, lee l now what are the questions so part one find the distance lee has to run when he overtakes kim overtakes is when they both meet as you can see when they meet the distance travel is showing to be at this point which is at this point so we have to find this value so to find this value we can uh, first read the scale so 10 square is equal to 500 so 10 square is 500 one square will be 50 so this value is one square below this that has so that has to be 1450 okay that is uh, this distance now for part b find how much longer kim takes to complete the course than lee so let's find that how would you find that we have to look at our time to uh, find that thing so lee completes the race at this point You have to uh, join this two, and Kim complete the race at this point. That is ten point eight, and that is twelve. So now the catching point is you have to see that because Lee and Kim did not start at the same time; they start at different times. So you cannot just take this minus this okay so you have to find how much time it takes each of them so kim take from this zero to this kim takes 12 but lee takes from one to this so we have to take this minus this that should be 9.8 and the difference will be minus that should be 2.2 .2. so part b it is 2.2 .2 minutes now for part C, we have Melvin starts three minutes after Kim. So it should be, so Kim is here, three will be right here. Now, okay, so here he says he runs the course in the opposite direction, that is from Q to P. So opposite will be here, will be mapped onto this point, so it will be right here. Now next step is... Uh, he runs at a constant speed, so whenever you have a constant speed on a distance time graph, it has to be a straight line. It takes 10 minutes to be at P. Now, from 3 plus 10, that should be 13. So he reached P at time 13. So, has to connect those two. 
by a straight line for the graph of Melvin. That is M for Melvin, that's right, M, M for Melvin. Now uh, we have part 2 here, this is done. Express Melvin's speed in km per hour. So speed, as you guys know, is distance divided by time. Distance is 2000 meters, which is 2 km. Time taken was, so begin at 3, finish at 13, it takes 10 minutes. So 10 minutes divided by 60 to make it become hour. So now we have to simplify. This one cancel out. So you can bring this one up. That will become 2 times 6 will be 12 km per hour. That will be the speed of Melvin, Melvin in 12 km per hour. And that is your question number 23, 24. So as you can see, this one will be a transformation question. Let's see what we got here. So we have triangles A and B, A and B. Now triangle A is mapped on the triangle B by an enlargement. Now part one, pretty easy. Find the scale factor and the center of this enlargement. So scale factor, we can just compare the sides. So this is this was one, it became one, two. So it has to be two. Now. Before we write this down, we have to understand something, is that because it was reflected, so you would agree that the center of rotation should be somewhere around here, right? So let's first find that, okay. So this point was mapped onto this point, and this point was mapped onto this point. So let's first join those two to find your center of uh, enlargement. So this, would be, this became this, and this became uh, this point. So you can see they meet at this point. This will be your center of enlargement, which is 0, 2. But since the enlargement happened on the opposite side of the of the point, the scale factor will be minus 2. OK, that's why it is minus 2. Now for part B, triangle A is mapped on the triangle C by a shear with an invariant line, the x-axis. So this is your x-axis as your invariant line. The factor is 2. So pretty easy, let's do one by one. So the first point here is this one. Distance from x will be one square. So shear factor is two times two, you will have two. So one, two. So same thing from here. Distance was one. Shear factor is two times two, that will be one, two. This one same. One, two, three times two, that will be one, two, three. Sorry, six actually, because three times two is six. 1, 2, 3. So you become this point. That will be your shear of the triangle A, and you have to label this as your triangle C. So just to re-explain, to find a shear, we must first count the distance from the point to your invariant line. So here we have, from the first point, we have only one square. Now since it is 1, now we have been given that the shear factor is given by 2, so we have to multiply this 1 by 2, so 1 times 2 is 2, so we have to move from this point, 1, 2, it becomes here. So same step, that was 1 times 2, 1, 2 becomes here. So this one was 1, 2, 3 times 2, that should become 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's why it's here. That will be your shear uh, for triangle A. That is question number 24. Now let's move on to question number 25. A bag contains five balls, of which three are red and two are blue. Now one ball is taken at random from the bag and is not replaced. Not replaced, okay? Now, if the ball is red, another ball is taken at random from the bag and is not replaced. The process is repeated until the ball, the blue ball is taken from the bag. Okay, so that's what happens. So the process is repeated until the blue ball is taken from the bag. So now we have to complete the tree diagram. So we have uh, three red balls and two blue balls. Second ball, now I go to third ball. So once we hit blue, we stop, so, but here we have to continue. So we have red and blue. Now be blue and red. So it is not replaced, so that will be 3 over 5, 2 over 4, that should be 1 over 3. And this will be 
2 over 3. So when you have red, you have to try again. Fourth ball. This and this. That will be red and blue. That will be 0 and that will be 1. That will be your tree diagram. Part A done. Now part uh, B. Expressing each answer as a fraction, find the chance that Part 1, the second ball is blue. So basically, have to be red and blue. 3 over 5 times 2 over 4. That will be, uh, simplify, you will have 1, 2. That is 3 over 10. That is your answer for part 1. Now part 2, the blue ball is the second ball or third ball taken. Second or third ball. So, we can uh, choose, right? It can be your second ball or the third ball. So, second ball was 3 over 10. Or the third ball can be red, red, and blue. So, 3 over 5 times 2 over 4 times 2 over 3, 4, blue ball. So, red, red, blue for the third ball. That will be 3 over 10. That will be a uh, calm, goes away. That will be 2 over 10. That should be 5 over 10. That will be 1 half. And that is your question part 2 of 25. Now let's move on to the last question. Uh, this one is a sequence question. Let's see uh, what do we have here. So your pattern of numbers is given below. Row 1 is 1 over 1 times 2. Row 2 is 1 over 2 times 3. Row 3 is 1 over 3 times 4. Row 4 is 1 over 4 times 5. So now what is row 10? As you can observe, row 10 has to be 1 over, here we have 4, 4, so 10 will be 10, times 11 is equal to 1 over, so here we have 4, that will be 10 minus 1 over 11. Right. Now for part B, adding the first two terms give you this result. Adding the first three terms give you this result. Write down the result, adding of the first four terms. So let's see. So first two terms give you 1. So on top you will have 1. So that will be 1. So 1 times 2. So that is the first two terms. Plus first three terms. And plus that fourth term. And what is the result? It should be 1 over 1 minus 1 over 4, uh, so basically here, you can see that the first three rows, here it is 4 the first two rows, it is 3 so the first four rows has to be one more, that is 5 and your answer has to be 3 rows, that will be 3 so 4 rows, that has to be 4 over, this is the same number, so 4, 4 so we're just comparing those two values to get the answer. That should be 4 or 5. Now part 2, using the patterns to write down A, the value of this one. As you can see, the answer here is what? So when you have this one, so when the last element is 1 over 3 times 4, your answer is 3 over 4. When your last element is 1 over 2 times 3, your answer is 2 over 3. So same thing. When the last element is 19 times 20, your answer should be 19 over 20. Now for part B, the number of rows that add up to 109 and 110. So you just compare, right? Because if you add up 3 rows, your answer is 3 over 4. So 3, 3 on top, and bottom is 3 plus 1, right? So same way. When you add up how many rows, on top has to be the same number of rows, which is 109. Okay, so as you can see, the number on top matches the number of rows. So 3 matches 3 rows. So 109 has to be 109 rows. Now for part C, an expression in terms of n for the result by adding the first n rows. So pretty easy. When you add the first n rows, has to be n over n plus 1. That will be your answer for question number 26. So that was the last question of this paper. I hope that was somewhat helpful. As always, uh, thank you for watching and good luck for your exam guys and 
all the best of course all the best and i will see you soon um, in the next video <laughs>